This is the final part of Don Bosco's mysterious vine dream, in which his heavenly guide informs us of the two main sins which lead souls to hell. You're watching The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. As I told you last evening, I woke up thinking the bell had rung, but quietly fell asleep again. Suddenly, something shook me, and I found myself answering letters in my room. I then walked to the balcony, gazed for a moment at the majestic dome of our gigantic new church, and went downstairs into the entrances. Priests and clerics gradually came from their various assignments and crowded around me. They included Father Rua, Father Caliero, Father Franchesia, and Father Savio. As we stood chatting, the Church of Mary, Help of Christians, and all our present buildings suddenly disappeared, and we were facing the old Pinardi shed. Again, I saw a vine sprout in exactly the same place, as if from the same roots. It grew to the same height and spread its shoots horizontally throughout the vast area. The shoots sprouted leaves and then produced clusters of grapes that ripened under my very eyes, but no boys were to be seen. The huge bunches of grapes were like those of the promised land. A man could hardly lift one of them. The grapes, perfectly ripe and golden, were oblong and so large that a single one would fill your mouth. They looked so good as to make your mouth water and seemed to say, eat me. Father Caliero and the other priests marveled at that spectacle. I kept exclaiming, how gorgeous these grapes are. Father Caliero unceremoniously plucked a few grapes and put one into his mouth. But as he sunk his teeth into it, he spat it out so quickly that he thought he was vomiting. The grape tasted like a rotten egg. Goodness gracious, he exclaimed, spitting. This stuff is enough to kill a man. As we stood speechless, a severe and resolute-looking man came out of the old chapel's sacristy and strode up to me. I asked him, how can such a beautiful grape taste so horrible? He didn't respond, but gravely fetched a bundle of sticks, picked a well-knotted one, and offered it to Father Savio, saying, take this and knock on those shoots. Father Savio refused and stepped back. Then the man approached Father Franchesia, who also refused. The stranger then took Father Caliero by the arm and tried to press the stick into his hand, saying, take it and strike, pointing to a certain spot. Startled, Father Caliero stepped back, exclaiming, are you joking? The stranger insisted, take it and strike. No way, Father Caliero said, hiding behind me in fright. Unperturbed, the stranger turned to Father Rua, asking him to strike the stick, but like Father Caliero, Father Rua took refuge behind me. That strange man came up to me, saying, Take this stick and strike those shoots. I made a great effort to see whether I was dreaming or awake, but it all seemed very real to me. So I asked the man, Who are you? Why do I have to knock these shoots and cast them onto the ground? Is this a dream or an illusion? Are you speaking to me in God's name? He answered, draw closer to the vine and see what's written on those leaves. I got close and read, ut quid terum occupat. Why does it still encumber the ground? That's from the gospel, my guide exclaimed. I understood it, but remarked, yes, but remember the gospel also says that our Lord allowed the vine dresser to dig around and fertilize it, delaying its destruction until he had made every attempt to help it bear good fruit? All right, then, we can postpone the punishment, but for now, take a look, said the strange man, pointing to the vine. I looked, but couldn't understand what he meant. Come here and read the writing on the grapes, he said. I noticed that they bore the name of each pupil and his dominant sin. I was horrified and particularly frightened by some inscriptions. Proud, unfaithful to his promises, unchaste, hypocrite, neglectful of his duties, calumniator, vindictive, 
heartless, sacrilegious, contemptuous of his superior's authority, stumbling block, follower of false doctrines. I saw the names of those quorum deus venter est, whose God is their belly, of those who scientia inflat, are bloated by knowledge, of those who querunt que sua sunt, non que Jesus Christi, seek their own interests, not our Lord's, of those who plot against their superiors and house rules. They were the names of past, present, and future pupils of ours. A large number of the latter were unknown to me. This is the fruit from this vineyard, said the man gravely, bitter, bad, and harmful to eternal salvation. I took out my notebook to jot down some names, but my guide stopped me once again, asking, What are you doing? Please let me write the names of those I know so that I can warn and correct them privately, I asked. However, as my guide would not consent, I added, If I tell those boys their pitiful state, they will amend their lives. He replied, If they do not believe the gospel, they won't believe you either. I insisted that I wanted to take notes to make rules for the future, but he ignored me and walked up to Father Rua with a bundle of sticks. Take one and strike the vine, he told him. Glancing at me, Father Rua crossed his arms, bowed his head, and murmured, Patience. As I nodded approvingly, Father Rua grabbed a stick, drew close to the vine, and began beating at the spot indicated. He had hardly dealt a blow when the guide motioned him to stop and shouted to all of us, Step back! We all withdrew a certain distance and watched as the grapes swelled up and, while retaining their golden color and shape, inflated like hideous masses, resembling snails out of their shells. The guide again shouted, Watch now as the Lord exacts his vengeance. The sky immediately darkened, and a dense fog covered the vine entirely from our sight as darkness covered everything. Through the darkness, lightning flashed, thunder roared, and dreadful thunderbolts struck the playground. Under the furious wind, the vine shoots bent, and their leaves were stripped away. Finally, a hailstorm hit the vine. I tried to flee, but my guide held me back, saying, Look at the hail! I looked and saw hailstones big as eggs. They were black or red, each pointed at one end and flat at the other, like a mallet. Those nearest to me were black, but I could see the red ones beyond. How strange, I exclaimed. I've never seen hailstones like these. Get closer and you'll see something else, said the stranger. As I got closer to the black hailstones, an awful stench made me draw back immediately. At the man's insistence, I picked one up to examine it, but dropped it instantly, unable to stomach the smell. I can't see anything, I said. Try again, he replied. Overcoming my disgust, I took up a black hailstone and read on it, Immodesty. I then walked over to the red hailstones. They were ice cold, but started fires wherever they fell. I picked one up. It still smelled awful, but I found it slightly easier to read. Pride. Somewhat embarrassed, I asked, Are these then the two main vices threatening this house? These are the two principal vices that ruin most souls, not only in your house, but all over the world. In due time, you will see how many will plunge into hell because of them. So, what should I tell my sons to make them abhor them? You will soon find out what to tell them, he said, moving away from me. Meanwhile, amid thunder and lightning, hailstones kept pelting the vine furiously. The grapes looked as if they had been thoroughly crushed by Vintner's feet in a vat their juice fouled the air with such a horrible stench that one could hardly breathe. Each grape gave out a foul smell of its own, each more repelling than the other, depending on the number and kind of sin. Unable to bear it, I put my handkerchief to my nose and turned to return to my room. 
but I realized that I was utterly alone. Father Francesia, Father Rua, Father Caliero, and all the others had fled. I became so frightened in that silence and solitude that I ran to escape and woke up. We should take advantage of the stern, honest, and candid message that God was giving Don Bosco to relate to his boys. We should amend our lives while there is yet still time. I pray that Our Lady Help of Christians bless, protect, and guide you to her wise and immaculate heart through the intercession of St. John Bosco. Thank you all so much for watching, and please consider helping me with a small monthly donation by following the link in the description below so that I can continue making videos and reach more people with the precious gift of the stories of St. John Bosco's life. God bless you and Our Lady keep you.